Are you thinking about starting a personal finance blog? If so, this is the video for you because in this video, we'll be talking about how to start a personal finance blog. I'll be showing you some personal finance blog examples and income reports, as well as showing you step-by-step -step how to start your own personal finance blog. So if that sounds interesting to you, stay tuned. If we haven't met before, my name is Tiffany Domina and you're watching the How to Entrepreneur YouTube channel where we talk about how to start and grow businesses from idea to full-time income and from full-time income to enterprise. So if you haven't yet, definitely subscribe to this channel and click the bell icon so you can be notified of upcoming videos. Now let's jump right into looking at these personal finance blog examples. So the reason I'm showing you these personal finance blog examples is because I know that when you start out in a new career field, you want to know what is the potential, what is it that you could possibly earn, what is it that the ultimate goal looks like. And whether you're starting in nursing or whether you're starting as a marketer or whether you're starting in engineering or as a blogger, you probably ask the question, what does it look like to be successful in that career field? And so that's what I want to show you. What do personal finance success stories look like so that you can see what they're doing and what might make their blogs work? And also, I want to show you what types of income these success stories were able to make. Now, I also want to disclose to you that these blogs are by no means a typical example of results that bloggers get in the personal finance space or anywhere else because actually a lot of people that get into blogging get into it with the wrong expectations and actually quit very early on so that's a normal trend but i want to set you up for a different outcome which is why we're talking about what successful stories look like and i'll be sharing with you step by step how to start a successful personal finance blog on the right foot. So let's jump right into talking about these examples. So example number one is The Busy Budgeter and this blog was started by a woman named Rosemary Groner. And in her blog, she talks about various ways for budgeting and saving money and making money and as you can see, she talks about how to budget, home organization, make money, and easy meals. So a lot of times the easy meals tie together with the budgeting because um, if you can save on food costs, then you can save a lot of money. She also discloses her income on her blog so that you can see it. And I've pulled up one of her income reports so you can see how she's making her money on her blog so let's take a look okay so as you can see she has her income report and this may have been the last income report she did at the time she was thinking that the income reports were no longer helpful to people because she had kind of gotten to a level that made her an outlier and a lot of people might feel intimidated when they see the level of income she had and they won't be able to see how they're able to make the same thing. So this might be the last one that she did, but this one is from January 2017. And at the time, she had 505,239 page views, which is a little different than users or how many people are coming to her blog. So usually people will come to your website and at least view one page or two pages so at 505,000 page views she probably has more than 200,000 people coming to her website every month more than 250,000 people coming to her website every month and as a result of the amount of people coming to her website and her having products and services available for sale on her website then she makes $86,438.83 that's how much she made in January 2017. So she broke it down even more to say that she made $3,600 from sponsored posts. She made $4,744 from running ads like you see this ad here and you'll see ads down at the bottom of her website. So she made $4,744 from having these ads on her website. 
Then she made $19,300.83 from affiliate marketing, which is promoting other people's products and services. And then she made $58,794 from selling her own products. So she has digital products like the Pinterest strategy guide, the core affiliate strategy, and the 90 day budget bootcamp workbook. So all of these together made $86,438.83 from her blog. Now I want to show you another example. And this blog, hisandhermoney.com, is a personal finance blog and is really interesting. It's done by a husband and wife and they share personal finance advice. They did a podcast episode where they had Ruth Sukup from livingwellspendingless.com come to their blog and she had a success story of running a multi-million dollar blog. So Living Well Spending Less is a multi-million dollar personal finance blog that you should definitely check out. There she talks about, it's really a lifestyle blog. She talks about quite a few different topics, but um, she monetizes through affiliate marketing, through selling her own products, through sponsored posting, and through ads as well. Now here's another blog and it's called makingsenseofsense.com and this site is run by Michelle Schroeder Gardner and she has her income reports. Now she just recently stopped posting income reports um, because she travels quite a bit and she thought it was a security concern but she has a whole archive of income reports that you can go and look at and one cool thing about her income reports is that she's charted how the income breaks down so majority of her income comes from affiliate marketing 63 percent and then she has 16 percent that comes from courses 19 percent that comes from sponsorships and then she had uh, two percent that came from display advertising and with this income she was able to make 1.5 million in 2019 and one other income report is smartpassiveincome.com by pat flynn and this one is a personal finance blog that talks about how to create a passive income portfolio by starting an online business and he talks a lot about starting what's called niche websites that are monetized with affiliate marketing so as a result of his income strategy he was earning somewhere around two million dollars a year and he shows a breakdown of how he was earning his money so that you can see where the money was coming from and where the money was going out to so in his income reports as you can see his net earnings was $125,819.91 and his gross earnings was $166,000 $559.31. Out of that, $105,619.13 was from affiliate marketing. So these are the programs that he was promoting products for or the companies he was promoting products for. Aweber, Best Year Ever by Michael Hyatt, Bluehost, ConvertKit, Create Awesome Online Courses, Lead Pages, Market Samurai, Sam Cart, Social Media Marketing World, Teachable, WP Wishlist, and Bonjuro. So each of these companies, whenever he would refer people to those companies to make a purchase, just by way of him having an established audience and trust, he was able to refer people who would trust his opinion over to these companies and they would make a purchase when he does that those companies will give him a commission from that referral so affiliate marketing is a very very cool way to make an income and we'll talk a lot more about affiliate marketing in this video because I think it's actually the best way for you to start making an income with your personal finance blog and I'll share more reasons why I think that in this video he also had an income from book sales as you can see he wrote uh, four books and from those books he was getting royalties of two thousand two hundred and forty six dollars and fifty cents 
for that month. He had course sales, so he has his own digital courses, just like I showed you with uh, Making Sense of Sense and also with The Busy Budgeter and Ruth Sukup as well. They all have their own digital products. So this is something that you can consider. And then he had niche websites, which is websites that are built and monetized with affiliate marketing. And so he built a portfolio of those that make him income similar to how you would make income from real estate. So you create the content, you create high demand content, low supply content, and um, people come to see that and make purchasing decisions straight from your website. And you can get recurring income from these type of affiliate niche sites. And then he had sponsorships. He runs a podcast and he has a lot of listeners on his podcast. So then companies like to work with him and to, um, for him to mention their brand or their products and they pay for that. And lastly, he has um, pro software products that he sells. He shares his expenses as well. So these are some common expenses you can expect with a personal finance blog. Um, you might need to hire accountants, bookkeepers, lawyers, all of these things. This isn't something that you need to start out with, but these are things that he would have to pay for as a 10 year old business. So over time, these are things that you may need to think about or project that would be a part of growing your personal finance blog. Now we've talked about some examples. I want to finally like summarize how much do personal finance bloggers make so that you can have some realistic expectations about what's attainable in the in the career field. Now personal finance bloggers have a varying income because they have different ways that they can make an income. They can make an income from services like maybe you're an accountant or you're a finance analyst and you actually go through people's budgets and um, make recommendations and things like that. So you can make money from consulting or from actually having a service like that. You can make money from um, various different means and so the income potential is quite a varying range but most bloggers start out investing money from their own pockets on things like hosting themes and any software tools that they might need to grow their blogs and they typically spend a thousand dollars or less and the blog is built in a self-paced manner. So most blogs make less than a full-time income for the first two years of blogging. Some people will have jobs, they might have kids, they might have other personal situations that take time away from growing the business. And for others, they may have work ethic issues and they don't have the wherewithal to grow a successful blog. So these are some things to be mindful of. Now, I have seen people who have great work ethic, who hit the ground, they don't have any distractions, and they're able to make their blogs take off within the first year. Usually that has to do with doing a lot of outreach, putting a lot of effort in, and um, possibly even having some background knowledge on how to grow a blog even before they get started. So I have seen full-time incomes that happen within the first year, but they're definitely outliers. So the successful blog examples demonstrate what's possible if you decide to grow a blog like it's a small business. Um, you have to treat it like it's a real job and like you have people relying on you for your information. When you work on your blog like it's a real business and you continue to produce high quality content and sell products and services, then it's normal to reach a full-time income between two and four years from starting the blog and you can grow your blog well into the 100,000 or more per month range with persistence. So this is possible, but like I mentioned, it comes with consistency and continued effort. Now I want to talk to you about how to start your personal finance blog. By this point, you see what's possible. We've talked about the realistic expectations and how much personal finance bloggers might be making. And now I want to talk to you about how you can get started step by step. So this part I'm really excited to talk to you about because 
Um, I, I really love to see small businesses start. And so I want to provide you with the information that you can use to start your blogging business. So let's get started. So first you want to choose a niche. And I'm not sure if you've heard this word before. Although you might think personal finance is a niche, it's actually a full industry. And if you think about it, banks market to different people within the personal finance industry. And you'll see a bank like uh, Wells Fargo, and they market to different people than a bank like Vanguard. Um, so you'll find this quite a bit. You have to choose a target audience or a niche. And as a new blogger, it's really important to choose who that target customer is so that you can market appropriately. And you want to choose topics to write about on your blog that will attract that target customer. So if you can really um, decide on who that target customer is and what their exact interest is, it's much easier to attract them and um, to satisfy whatever their interests are on your blog. So personal finance sub niches, some things that you might want to consider are uh, money saving hacks, credit card reviews, investment software reviews, investment tutorials, side hustles, debt free journeys, paying off debt, starting a business, real estate investing, real estate flipping, stock investing, day trading, or even make money online, which has lots of different sub niches inside like affiliate marketing, social media marketing, business opportunity reviews, and so on. So these are some sub niches that will fall within personal finance that you may want to consider. But after you've chosen a niche, from there it's important to build your website. And once you've chosen the audience, then you can build a website that will really be attractive by using good imagery and by um, using the terminology that would be attractive and relatable to them. So starting a new WordPress blog can be fairly easy. WordPress is the common content management system that's used online. M like more than 80% of websites online are run on what's called WordPress. WordPress is very customizable. Um, you have a lot of freedom of control and things that you can do to build out your website to have so many features and a lot of the other content management systems like Wix, Weebly, Squarespace, all of those don't have as many customizable features as WordPress does. So I recommend that you start out with a WordPress website. And if you're interested in testing that out, you can stop by How to Entrepreneur. I'll leave a link to this article in the description box below. And you can build a free WordPress website just so you can see how it works. You can see how it would be to create your first post or create a page and all of those things. And this free website actually comes along with free training so you can know how to lay out the blog and all of the technical side of building the blog. So information about the free website and free training will be included in this post. And I'll also leave a link in the description box below where you can stop by and get a free website free training, and also seven days of coaching from me where you can ask me the questions that you might have as you are getting your personal finance blog set up. As a disclaimer, the free website can be hosted for six months without billing information, but if you decide that you want to transfer it onto your own custom domain name, then you have to buy the domain. And that means that if you wanted to say financesuperhero.com, instead of finance superhero dot site rubik's dot com then you have to buy your own custom domain name and site support can transfer the site for you to your new domain so that's really simple number three you want to set up your social media channels now one way of getting customers to your um to your new blog is to set up your social media channels so you'll notice that most successful personal finance blogs have established email lists and they also have established social followings and this comes with time just continuing to put out good 
high quality content will help people to see that you're a helpful blogger and they'll the social media will provide multiple touch points where you can reach your audience and it's also multiple ways for you to meet new potential customers so it's important for you to start and establish a social footprint that will help you to drive traffic to your website and the products and services that you offer again when you sign up for the free website and training then you'll be able to learn much more about how to grow a social media following and all of those details number four monetize your site so once you've built your website it's important to plan like a business owner and you want to decide what products and services that you can sell in order to make money from your website so like i said i recommend you getting started with a, a personal finance affiliate programs and this is my top recommendation for startup bloggers is to start with affiliate marketing and the reason is because um, when you start out with something like your own products or services then you have to test you have to really build a lot of trust you have to hear that the product is not so good and, and get the take the product back and keep improving it and improving it until you get results and basically it takes longer to get into the market and to stabilize an upward flow where you're getting customers at a rapid pace if you start out with products and services that are already established and are, that are already working in the market then it's much easier for you to start getting sales that you can reinvest into things like product development and it helps to grow your business much faster so affiliate marketing the actually joining affiliate programs and, and selling the products on your website doesn't have a cost whereas product development even if you don't have to buy products or services to produce the product for example if you're creating digital products it doesn't necessarily cost aside from the learning management software that you have to use to distribute the courses and maybe video uh, production type of equipment but I don't want to go on that tangent of what all it costs to create a course. I just want you to know that there are more costs associated with that as a startup option. And if you want to start with the lowest possible overhead and the quickest entry into the market, then affiliate marketing is the best option. I have several videos on affiliate marketing. And in fact, I'll leave um, some of those videos in the description box. But if you stop by How to Entrepreneur, you'll see that I have uh, videos and articles that disclose to you how I made my first affiliate sale. Um, I talk about how to become an affiliate marketer. I have a beginner's guide on affiliate marketing and actually I coach affiliate marketers on a day-to-day -day basis through a platform called Wealthy Affiliate. So all of these resources will be available to you if you are interested. Uh, digital products is also something that you can do to make money and I personally do it. Um, in addition to affiliate marketing, you can make money from creating products that you sell on your blog. Um, so you can create things like online courses, eBooks, PDF downloads, checklists, personal finance binders or planners, and lots of other things and these are just a small list of things that I've seen personal finance bloggers sell on their blogs sometimes they might sell uh, budgeting software budgeting worksheets um, you know the envelope system so many different things that you can think about that might be helpful to people who are looking to improve their financial situation so your digital products can help people to make money and it can also help you personal finance blogs also can make money from display ads now I showed you on the busy budgeter and you may have seen ads on making sense of sense as well but basically the ads are like I don't see ads here but the ads are like these ads that show up here and you can eventually make money from that you have to get more traffic to your website before that is a lucrative income so as you saw with uh, rosemary groner on her site the busy budgeter she was having over 500,000 page views per month which is a lot of opportunities for 
businesses to present their advertisements to her visitors and that's why she made so much money from advertising now if you don't have a lot of traffic then it won't be possible to make that type of money with display ads but when your site is built is established with content and you have a regular flow of content and especially if you have a niche that is very clearly a buying niche then you can make a lot of money from ads now personal finance blogs also can make money from what's called sponsorships there are companies that would be willing to work with you maybe banks or other companies who have the same target audience as you do and they realize that you have an audience that is established and possibly engaged so they might sponsor a post on your website or sponsor a post on your social media pages but these are all possibilities for personal finance bloggers and lastly selling services I talked about consulting before but you can also sell memberships networking groups um, you can help with budgeting you can sell coaching or webinars and events um, you can analyze portfolios um, you can help people to build their own blogs other services can be sold on a blog and all of these are options and we talked about products but aside from digital products there are physical products that you can sell like t-shirts or planners uh, wallets budgeting software posters and reminders things that will help people to stick to their personal finance habits so all of these things are products that could be created and sold on a personal finance blog number five you want to publish content so once you've decided how you'd like to make money from your blog it's important to start publishing content posting content on your website on social media or via ads or like handing out business cards in traditional marketing so you'll need to do good publishing and have a regular publishing schedule so that you can drive traffic online and number six as you are publishing this high quality content and it's optimized for the search engines Google and Bing and, and uh, Yahoo and different social media sites will send traffic to you and it's not automated is something that um, basically when you have your content and people see it they can decide that it's engaging to them and they want to learn more and so that traffic coming to your website presents you an opportunity to inform people with your information and to make a sale now number seven you make money so when you're getting traffic to your website and more people are seeing your products and services then you can make money from your website now that is the step-by-step -step of how to start a personal finance blog and how you can make money with a personal finance blog I know that was a lot of information but I hope that that was really helpful for you so wow that was a lot of information but I'm hoping it was really really helpful for you and it really gave you some things to think about both in what the potential is for starting a personal finance blog and also things you can do to start your personal finance blog on the right foot now I would love to help you start your personal finance blog and I'll leave some information where you can get some training and also some support coaching support as well as um, networking support beyond just me and um, where you can join a community the community that I'm a part of that has actually over 2 million members who are online entrepreneurs starting websites sharing ideas and um, also the software hosting domain registration everything that you need to get your website started off on the right foot like I said you can try out a WordPress website for free if you're interested but if you are already familiar with WordPress I'd love to help you out with starting and growing your personal finance blog give you encouragement keep you motivated and um, answer questions you might have along the way if this video was helpful for you please leave a thumbs up 
And if you'd like to see more videos like this where I do product and service reviews as well as growth strategies to help you grow a business from idea to full-time income and from full-time income to enterprise, then definitely subscribe to this channel and click the bell icon so you can be notified of upcoming videos. Now, that's all I have for this video, and I really hope to see you in the next one. Have a great day. Bye.